Let's bring in Elliot Friedman, our insider. Elliot, your thoughts on this move? As we all know, Ryan Ellis is 30 years old, and as previously mentioned, this is six years still remaining on that pact. Your reaction? You know, Tony, I didn't know how many contracts with a lot of term would get traded this year, but I do think that Ryan Ellis was, had a chance to be one of the players whose long-term deal did get dealt. Ryan Ellis has a lot of respect in the league. Uh, people like the way he approaches the game. Uh, people like how hard he plays. I mean, the only question are injuries. Um, you know, he's battled, for example, a hip problem at times, and I think that was probably the only concern. Um, I also think that this was something that came up last year around the trade deadline. I think Philly talked to Nashville about both Eckholm and Ellis. I think Nashville is going to try to extend Eckholm now. And, you know, I, both of those players were guys that Philly really liked. And, you know, the other thing, too, is Provorov had a really tough year this year. I think they feel that Ellis can really help that out. I think this is a player that Philly considered for a long time. They also pursued Seth Jones. I don't think they believe they were going to get a long-term commitment from Seth Jones. So that's why they switched to Ellis. And I guess I'm always surprised. It was a wild day-to-day, -day and it's great for fan interest. But when I heard it was Ellis to Philadelphia, I wasn't surprised that was a player that Philadelphia had targeted. We're all intrigued by the team's list in terms of the players that they're project protecting with the mm -hmm. expansion draft looming. Big surprises. Are you hearing any names that surprise you? You know, I, I think this will filter out uh, over the next uh, 24 hours before the league comes out. Uh, I think one of the names is, is definitely Tarasenko. It sounds like St. Louis has not protected him. And I'm very curious to see what's going to happen here. And if any way St. Louis is going to incentivize uh, Seattle not to take him. I think this is something St. Louis could do potentially trade-wise. So I'm very curious to see how this is going to work. I think another one is Zadorov from Chicago. Um, you know, Chicago at this point in time hasn't extended him. I think that St. Louis, uh, Seattle excuse me, is a team that's going to try to build from the blue line. That's Ron Francis's history. So those are a couple of names that I'm curious about right now. I'm also curious about the goalies. Uh, Jake Allen from Seattle. Chris Dreger from Florida. I do think uh, Seattle's going to draft uh, Dreger and sign him. Um, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with players like Braden Holtby and Jake Allen because there's a lot of goaltenders out there and there's a lot of teams looking for them. But I have a feeling this is going to trickle in over the next 24 hours until they're officially released. Florida fans know what Drieger brings. That think about the fact that all three goalies, Spencer Knight, <clears throat> Bob, and Drieger, all played in that playoff series in the first round against the Bolts. How about Miro Haskinen? The eight-year deal that is a whopper, but certainly well-earned. The impact of that deal, the ripple effect for, say, a Kale McCarr or a John Klingberg, what do you think it is? Well, I, I think the biggest thing this year is that a lot of the uh, restricted free agent defensemen, you mentioned McCarr and Haskinen, and we should also throw in Quinn Hughes from Vancouver and Rasmus Dahlin from Buffalo. A lot of them were looking at the Thomas Shabbat deal. And Thomas Shabbat signed an 8 times 8 deal in Ottawa before his third year. And the agent who did that deal is Ian Pulver, and he also represented Haskinen. And I think all of those players felt that if they signed long term, they should be ahead of what Shabbat got. So as we found out today, Haskinen's the first one of them to sign. Dallas said Haskinen wanted term. He wanted eight years. I think Dallas was very happy to do it. I think this is going to deal going to be a deal that's going to turn out to be great for the stars. I think that he's a guy who will live up to this. But we know that that number is above eight million. So if Colorado wants to do Makar and if Vancouver wants to do Hughes, they know that they're looking at eight times eight deals. Klingberg will be interesting. I mean, he's got one year left, and obviously he's a very important player to Dallas. Uh, we'll see where this goes here. I, I don't have any information on that, so I don't want to make any wild predictions. But I think the Stars were really happy to get long-term for Haskinen. And I think in the long run, this turns out to be a good deal for them. And he lives up to it easy. He is a special player. So much fun to watch. And He's no Ken Danico. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. He's a... More along the lines of Scott Niedemeyer. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot Friedman, thanks so much. All right, guys. Have a great night.